I'm Wendy Sharp. I'm sitting in the Yellow House Gallery, which is a very famous place in Potts Point in Sydney. It was an artist collective in the early 70s and it was established by Martin Sharp, no relation, spelt differently, um, and it also had people like Brett Whiteley, George Gittos, Greg Waite and many other well-known artists um, living here or moving through it. And uh, among the things that they used to do was paint all over the walls and paint pictures all over the ceilings and it was full of groovy art happenings and extraordinary things. And uh, that now relates to what I'm doing here. Um, we are surrounded in this empty gallery space at the moment by over 30 metres of paintings that I have painted on the walls. I painted these pictures on the walls over a three day period and it is for a series of three concerts, three nights, with the Australian Art Quartet. I'm sitting where the audience will eventually be and they will be surrounded by my paintings but they also will have the wonderful music of the Australian Art Quartet and they will see an extraordinary performance with uh, Clementine Robertson who will have beetroot juice dripped slowly on her, which is an unusual thing, and um, also the composer Andrew Bat Rawdon will be posing nude for me and I'm going to be drawing him in a couple of places on the wall um, and I'm going to do this each night, draw him and then it'll be painted out each time. And you know, he's doing, this is not just gratuitous nudity, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, it is also because the piece of uh, music that's going to be played is an autobiographical piece in which he really does reveal his inner self. So if he's going to do his inner self, he may as well do his outer self and be a life model for me. So that's one of the things that's going to happen. And um, I have just finished painting it all and uh, I'm actually quite pleased with it. So to design this was really difficult, it took me a long time. Um, I have been thinking about this for months and months and I have been doing little sketches and writing down ideas. Uh, I've been looking through some of my, other, my paintings that I've done before and trying to use some of those images amongst this. And I wanted to have a range of different things that are kind of poetic and are not really forming any kind of definite narrative. So they are supposed to be evocative and maybe dreamlike, I suppose, if you like, or nightmare-like, whatever, um, and make you wonder what's going on and open up your imagination. It's, uh, it's something that I've always been interested in, the idea of um, reality and imaginary and so on. So there's a lot of different strange things all coming together, I hope. Um, I wanted to try to have as big a range of different things as possible. So that means scale, for example, there is some very large things, like there's very large heads, there are some more detailed things, there are some very thick, uh, bold, solid areas of paint, there are some washy things, there's some things that just look like a black and white life drawing, etc. There's really kind of as many different ways of uh, depicting something as I could. Um, and I was trying to see, trying to make sure that they all work together. So to do this, I didn't just finish one bit at a time. I brought in all my sketches and plans and um, I felt that as soon as I came in, even though I knew very well how big the walls are and the plan of the gallery, as soon as you walk into the actual space, you have to change it. So I used some of my initial sketches and then um, I changed it around a bit and uh, I would work on one section and then leave that, work on another section, leave that, so the whole thing comes up together rather than finishing one bit at a time. That's because even though there are some different images amongst it, it has to work as a whole. It can have a very strange logic, but it has to have its own logic. 
So if I have some black and white sketchy areas, I would like to have something else that's sketchy somewhere else. If there is some solid bold paint, there needs to be something solid and bold somewhere else, etc. I also wanted some kind of rhythm running through it too. Doesn't need to be too obvious and specific, but I, I don't want it to be like a series of, you know, kind of repetitive uh, images. I wanted it to, to move and undulate through in some way. So all of those things were a challenge. The other thing is, of course, working on such a huge scale is that you need to keep stepping back. You need to keep stepping back because you draw something and you, uh, it, you can't get the perspective right and get the scale right until you step back. Um, for example, when I was um, drawing James Beck, the cellist from the Australian Art Quartet, uh, he was actually posing for me playing the cello because I thought it would be really good to have a cellist as you walk in the door, which is him. And um, it was lovely drawing him while he was actually playing. But where I was in the entrance, I couldn't step back, so it was really hard because I was drawing his head and, you know, okay, that's all right. And then I'd crouch down and draw his feet. They look all right. And then when you do squash yourself back against the wall to look at it, um, feet are too small and in the wrong position. So it's a question of keeping on walking back and making sure that it works as a whole. I mean, that's always the issue with working on a large scale, but obviously when you're working on this scale, um, that takes on a whole new meaning. The paint used for this is Matisse Structure, a professional acrylic paint, and it really is fantastic paint and the perfect paint to use for this. Uh, a bit more than 15 years ago now, I painted an Olympic pool size mural um, at Cook and Phillip Park Aquatic Centre, which is in College Street in Sydney, between the Natural History Museum and St Mary's Cathedral. And that's painted differently to this. It's not, um, this is like drawing more. That's much more solid, bold, flat areas of paint. But even though it's in this incredibly difficult environment because it's got the heat, it's got the pool chemicals, etc., etc., it's still held up so well. So it's, it's fantastic. But the other thing about it is it's got incredible coverage. Now you can't believe how much, how a little bit of paint goes so far. So um, I'm, I was aware of that from my previous experience with it. And uh, it has a beautiful colour range. So you can really do anything with it. I have used the paint um, solidly with big brushes um, and uh, I, in a, quite an opaque way. I've also used it very thinly, sometimes watering it down a lot and using a rag or a wet ex or some kind of cloth and swishing it across so that it looks like watercolour. I've also drawn, drawn with it by dipping rags and things into the paint and drawing with it. It looks like I've used many different types of paint, but it is all the same paint. It just shows you how incredibly versatile it is. It also dries fast, which is a plus, so I could go over it or change it if I want to. And um, although this is a bit of a shocking thing to say, these paintings, this painting, is only up for the three nights of the concert, and then it will be painted over. And um, after a couple of coats of white house paint, it will be gone. So, you know, it's incredible that it has that permanency, but you can also get rid of it if you need to. So, um, you know, it's a, it, it was the perfect thing to use. <laughs>